Hello again, everyone. Kenna Kostman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here to give you a very juicy update of what is happening right now in the third week of April with lumber prices, uh, lumber sales, uh, how's the inventory, uh, all of the situations with the various sawmills across North America for the different species and products, whether it's western spruce, eastern spruce, southern pine, uh, Douglas fir, whether it's uh, dimension lumber, boards, uh, studs, um, or plywood OSB, and also we do cedar, but I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to be talking about um, the uh, lumber that goes into construction framing uh, for the housing market in uh, Canada and the U.S. And so we've had uh, the Easter holiday, which is a big break here in Canada, and it also basically signals like the end of winter um, and a real ramp up in construction activity, uh, rebuilding, remodeling, all of that stuff um, work outdoors that can't really go on in the depth of winter. Uh, this is already going strong in the US. We have heard from our sources this week uh, as the weather is quite good. Um, in Canada, there was a uh, bit of a cold snap and some dump of snow uh, just this past week. It's going to melt quickly. We're uh, into longer days, lots of uh, daylight, and um, even if the snow falls, it doesn't last long. So uh, within a couple of weeks, the same amount of um, building activity is going to be happening here in Canada as is going on in the U.S. right now. And so for the lumber prices, you know, there's a bit of panic that was going on. Uh, if uh, When you look at the graphs, I'm going to show you actually uh, pretty quick here. You can see how we had some real uh, swings up and then uh, recovery back down since, you know, two years ago in uh, spring of 2020, when all of the uh, restrictions uh, to society, changes of lifestyle and working happened uh, due to the COVID. And so, uh, you know, in economics and when you do data like something I do, and you see, you know, the big, big up, and the big big down and then the next up not so high and the next down not so high so where we are uh, at this point is the third waffling as i like to call it and the uh, up was much much lower than the super high of 1600 per thousand board feet on the western spruce 2x4 um, and it looks like we're bouncing along at what we would call the new bottom now uh, we'll have to wait and see the rest of this year what happens but um, let's look at the graph let's look at the graph right now and I'll explain to you what I'm trying to say and here's the six prices that I show all the time uh, the western spruce eastern spruce and southern pine 2 by 4s used uh, largely for construction framing of single-family homes you've got your studs there the teal colored line can't build a house without studs and you've got Douglas fir green, which is highly favored by architects in the U.S. Eastern Seaboard and for deluxe housing in Texas and California. And then you've got your Canadian softwood plywood, the yellow line. Once again, you can't build a house without some kind of panel if it's plywood or OSB. So there's that volatility that we've been talking about uh, into second quarter of last year, all the way down to basically fourth quarter, and then up again in the early weeks of this year and then coming back down, but not as high and not as low. Where will it end up? We'll have to wait and see. And so now that same data presented as a table showing you the actual prices this week, uh, change compared to last week, and then change compared to the previous month. And those top three items, the Western Spruce, Southern Pine, and Eastern Spruce 2 by 4 Western spruce uh, in April down 21% compared to March. Southern pine down 36% compared to March. And eastern spruce down 17%. So this uh, suggests strongly that the price spike earlier this year, the southern yellow pine suppliers maybe tried to go a little bit higher than the market could handle. And that's why this correction down for them is a bit more steep than what it is for the other two. These three items are interchangeable. The builders have a preference, 
but they all meet the building code. And that's the reason why I use this Western Spruce Pine Fir KD 2x4 number 2 and better price uh, most often because it is produced at the largest volume of all the others. And when you have something like uh, one region, uh, the, southern, the southern yellow pine, as I was saying, trying to maybe push the price up higher than the market will accept, the customers push back, they counter offer or they just deny buying and they'll go to another region uh, whether it's eastern spruce uh, out of Quebec and New York State or western spruce out of British Columbia Washington State Oregon a little bit out of Idaho and Alberta and here you can see how those prices did go up and now they're correcting back down but not quite as volatile as that southern yellow pine uh, on the east side tried to do a few weeks ago Okay, great. And so you can see we have good reasons for saying what we say um, about what we think could be coming up uh, in the next uh, little while. It's very hard to know precisely when it's in a time of transition where we had that uh, price run up at the very beginning of this year and then a, a fall back down. What happens now that the customers have sort of lived through this a few times they are um, a little reluctant. Uh, if I really can hold off on my purchases, wait another week and see um, if the price will keep falling. Uh, but it looks like this week, uh, following the Easter uh, long weekend and getting really into spring construction activity, has been a turnaround and uh, looks like we've uh, reached what the bottom would be for prices at this stage, the supply demand balance is looking quite nice and customers did come back instead of just calling, you know, to find out what is the price and then saying, you know, I'll get back to you. They did book orders. So sales volumes did increase. The order files at the sawmills in the U.S. Uh, on the west side uh, for Western Spruce are uh, already into early May uh, in Canada as well, um, at least a couple of weeks. The uh, horrible transportation issue continues. So together with the customers sort of maybe being a bit reluctant and seeing if they can delay to buy is the issue of how long it's taking for the wood to arrive, uh, which is unpredictable and n not normal, uh, much longer than usual. You would have been, uh, you know, between three weeks and six weeks um, after it gets produced depending on where you are. Now it's another month at least and uh, no one knows where the wood is on the transportation chain. Uh, the mill doesn't know and the customer doesn't know. So there's a lot of time still now being spent searching for the wood that had already been ordered and sent out, um, which is making it difficult for the mills to set the price and for the customers to know how much they should be paying. Um, so that doesn't look like it's going to work itself out anytime soon. It's the same for everyone. It's not just lumber that's having these transportation issues. Now, what it is doing is causing a pileup of inventory at the mills so that they can't produce more. And we've had just now some announcements uh, three weeks ago, uh, one of the large manufacturers here in BC, and then this week, another large manufacturer. We've got uh, West Fraser and Canfor in curtailment uh, at least uh, either part of the week or at some of their facilities until they can move this wood out and make room to make more. And Sinclair announced this week they're going to a four-day week. Some of the mills uh, further up north are actually down completely because they can't ship. It's horrendous. It's absolutely astonishing that this is a time when the demand and the building activity is strong and the mills have logs. They can, they've got lots of logs. The log yards are very well stocked in advance of the um, snow melt in the spring. And the lumber yard is over full of wood that's already sold and can't get out. So that's where we are right now. Um, like I said, 
coming up now for you know May June. May, June, and July definitely is when the construction is really happening. Most of the uh, companies would have already ordered by now for this expected um, business that they're going to be going into next month. So prices do tend to soften at this time of year if you look at the historical, but we just haven't had, but the past two years have been nothing like the historical, and that is true for lumber manufacturing and sales as well as for the real estate market. There seems to be really not seasonality the way that we have been used to over like all these past decades. So check back often. Here in my caption, I have a link to my website. Uh, have a look around, see some of the stories that we write about. Uh, along the top there is subscribe. Uh, menu, you can actually subscribe to the uh, weekly lumber price uh, on my dashboard. We update that every Thursday, so Friday mornings, no matter what time you start working, the new data has been uploaded along with the market commentary explaining what happened with the market, why those prices are changing. If you just need these little uh, snapshot blurbs of a little bit of an overview, uh, click subscribe here on my YouTube and click like so that I get uh, suggested to other people and they can also enjoy all of the wonderful information that I give you uh, regularly.